and Anna Valley Community Foundation. I want to welcome you to our uh, quarterly donor meeting that we do four times a year. It's this is a group of uh, local people who come together to uh, talk about giving in this community. We bring our intellectual and financial capital to the table. We hear from outside speakers who are experts and innovators in the field of philanthropy and others who are just trying to make change happen for the greater public good. Um, and I think it's a real tribute to the tradition of giving in Napa County that we're able to draw such luminary speakers uh, up to uh, talk to us. So uh, many of you were with us in February when we had Paul Grass, who's the CEO of the Hewlett Foundation, which has a staggering, I don't know, half a billion dollar annual grant budget. Um, and Paul helped us understand how Hewlett tries to make a difference with regard to its grants very strategically which was a really kind of compelling message in this economy, right? Because many of us have fewer dollars to give than we did a couple years ago. Um, here's what specifically Paul had to say. He said, you kind of need three things. You need a clear goal, a long-term plan, and, an agree and some agreed upon indicators of success. So reflecting on today's discussion topic, the California state budget, <laughs> <laughs> strikes me is how little that recipe seems to apply to governance in the state of California, at least as we, as we know today. We, and to some, it feels like we're not governing from the top, but that we're trying to fly the aircraft in the coach section, not the cockpit. <laughs> Finally, with regard to Paul's admonition that you need indicators of success, uh, how about these for some indicators? Junk bond status, the worst credit rating among 50 states, access to debt markets, which is basically non-existent or extremely expensive, and a looming deficit of some 15 and a half to $21 billion, no matter what the outcome of next week's special election. So against that dismal backdrop, it's my great pleasure <laughs> uh, to, to, uh, to welcome two very distinguished speakers here today to help us shed some light on how the budget problems got so big so fast, what the state budget crisis means for vulnerable populations, in particular in Napa County, and how we might consider moving forward both as citizens and as donors. State uh, legislature in February passed, the governor signed into law a package of policy changes that closed a deficit of about $15 billion in the budget year that ends in June and a $25 billion deficit the year that begins July 1 of this year, runs through June 30th of next year. Um, probably, in, in percentage terms, it's about the same size budget gap as we had back in 2003. I would argue and do argue that it was much tougher because we never had a good year. We went from the dot-com collapse to a very, fairly anemic economic recovery, and now we're back into a much, much deeper economic downturn. So, and so as soon as the ink on that budget was dry, you saw first the legislative analyst, which is a nonpartisan body that advises the legislature, saying the state was going to have yet another $8 billion shortfall Today we learned that we're looking at a 15 to $21 billion shortfall depending on the outcome of next week's election. Well, it's driven by two factors. California, there's, when people like me talk about budget shortfalls, we talk about two types of deficits. One is a cyclical deficit, which is what you get when the economy turns down, your tax revenues fall, Demand on services goes up because people lose their job. They show up in his office expecting to get food stamps and health care. Um, so you have both, you know, on both sides of your ledger, income going down, demand for services going up. California has a big one of those. If you go back to that $40 billion problem in February, about three quarters of it uh, is related to the downturn in the economy. The remaining quarter is what somebody, sort of what budget law, somebody like me would call a structural shortfall. <clears throat> and that's when even in good economic times, your tax system doesn't bring in enough money 
to pay for the services that all of your programs in place uh, uh, oblige you to provide. So we, right now, we're about three quarters cyclical, one quarter structural. Depending on your ideology, depending on what your view of what government ought to do in society, you can explain that structural problem as sort of government overspending or, or too many tax breaks or problems with your tax system. But we have a mixture of both. Uh, in a year, again, where we're sort of coming into it with a lot of bad years, not a lot of savings, a lot of demand, uh, because of the downturn in the economy. How we got to where we are today, I think there are a lot of different explanations. And I always say it's like the proverbial thing about the blind person and the elephant. It's whatever part of the elephant you end up touching, sort of how you can explain uh, the roots of California's debt budget problems. I would certainly say, again, the economy right now is the driving factor. But over time, and I think this is the part of the story that we don't hear a lot about, uh, is that we have seen a tremendous volume of tax cuts through the legislature as well. And if you add up all of the tax cuts that have been acted over the past 15 years, and this doesn't go back to Prop 13 or any of the ones before that, uh, that's taken about $12 billion a year out of uh, the state's coffers, which, if again, if you sort of noodle around with the numbers, ends up remarkably close to uh, that structural <coughs> part of our budget shortfall. So what did they do back in February? Where are they going now? A little bit about the election. Uh, a $40 million gap even in California terms, is a really big budget gap to fill. And I'll give you just sort of a few markers. The state spends about $12 billion a year on the whole correctional system. So if you closed all the prisons, you know, that would close less than a third of the gap. Close down the University of California State University system, all the state funding, aid to community colleges, that's about $12 billion. So if you, you know, close down the prisons, close down the colleges, you're only just over halfway there. I think, again, because we always hear, you know, cut back to waste, fraud, and abuse, we are so far beyond that in California. When you look Thank you. It's such an honor to be included. Uh, first, just to speak to this group that does so much for this community, thank you very much. And also to be included on a bill with uh, Gene Ross, the analogy that comes to my mind would be if you wanted to know about the federal government, you've just heard from Barack Obama, and now you're gonna get the mailman's perspective. <laughs> my goal is to link uh, what you've heard about the state fiscal picture to what's actually happening here in Napa County what can be expected to happen here in Napa County, and more specifically, what may happen to some of the nonprofit organizations in Napa County that I know many of you uh, support. Unfortunately, uh, what counties in California are running up against is a lot of their revenue sources are being impaired. Uh, the sales taxes, property taxes, for the first time in a long time in Napa County, are they're not going up at that robust level. They're actually starting to decline in many areas, especially places like American Canyon. Yeah. Uh, food stamps and, and, and uh, Medi-Cal applications are up 30%. Um, we're seeing upwards of 4,000 people a month through the uh, passing through the waiting room for various assistance programs. Um, CPS, Child Protective Services, substantiated reports of child abuse in Napa County are up 30%. Now there's, there's a sentinel statistic. Uh, there are probably a million reasons why, but there's no question but what they're tied into the, uh, uh, the economic environment. I am urging everyone that I know to prioritize local support. Uh, this is a time when our community absolutely needs local support, and it's a time, I don't think that there's a time when support will have more direct impact uh, the net. Thank you very much.